So we're going to talk about a blood drive, and our theme that we related to was education for all, and you guys will understand why. Uh, uh, so I'm La Gonçalves, I'm a junior at Chapel School. I'm Karina Oliveira, I'm a senior at Chapel. Um, my name is Barbara Misaka, I'm also a senior. My name is Paula Combi, and uh, I'm a junior. And, and we are uh, students and members of the National Honor Society, which is a student group at Chapel School, and we are uh, located in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And the NHS, the National Honor Society, uh, is a student group for honor students. Uh, and we make projects that are based on the four pillars, which are citizenship, scholarship, leadership, and service. Just a quick poll here. Whose school has NHS? Oh, so you guys know what it is. We thought we didn't know, but it's fine. And this idea of the blood drive uh, started two years ago with an alumni, and she actually graduated last year. And we, since we, the school had a few uh, logistical and, and, and legal problems, uh, we couldn't, she couldn't get, get this process through, uh, through. So she brought it to the NHS, and we, we thought it could, we could make it happen, and we started organizing everything in April, and last semester, at the end of last semester, we, we saw that the, blood, that the blood, blood banks in Sao Paulo were sort of low, and we saw, saw that as an opportunity to make this project, project happen. Yeah, we're gonna explain like how we went through this, because there were so many complications that involved, because giving blood isn't something easy, something you can't just go and do on the spotlight. It involves something, especially if it's with minors, because people from 16 or above can donate, but if it's minors, which are under 18, the um, parents have to sign, so there's that's the legal issues that he's referring to. And since uh, it's involving the school's name, uh, if anything happens, the school might be blamed. This is why uh, there's, we got have forms, and we'll go over that a little bit later. And, uh, want to talk about the importance of Sure. Basically, this picture shows the importance. This is a drop with the need, and this is a drop of the donation, so it's like a ratio. So you can see that, obviously, there's not as much donation as there is the need. And you guys will start to learn some statistics later on about how many people in the world need to donate so that the whole bubble is filled, the whole drop, I'm sorry. And also, basically, the reason why we mainly started this was, like Leo explained, the blood banks in Sao Paulo were very low, like very, very low. There was, um, they needed 46% um, more than they had. So like they were 46% less of deficit. So that's like almost half, which is a big number considering people go through surgeries and through uh, procedures every day in the hospital, hospital. So it's something that's always in constant need. And when we saw the news, um, we decided to basically act on it. Even though it's on a small scale, you guys will see how it can impact and the blood banks are still kind of low, like until today, so it still worries us a little bit. And uh, having in mind that we brought 10 people to donate in the blood drive, and people uh, under uh, 57 kilograms have, uh, can donate about 40, uh, 110 milliliters and above 450. Uh, how many liters of blood do you think we donated in one trip? Just a quick, because we took 10 people in October to donate, and they were 10, um, only some of them were over 18, but they were 10 like high school students. So it was like, we're gonna go again to donate, but that was like our first trial thing to see if people were actually interested <coughs> in growing and how the whole procedure works. So just a quick question, how many how many liters of blood do you guys think that we donated? What do you guys meant? 4,000 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, liters. liters. How many? This is actually oh, pretty close. I think it was like 4,000. Someone else? Sensor? 4,000 That's closer. Yeah. 4,500 milliliters? Once again, sir? Yeah. So, what we, when, what we actually ended up donating was uh, 4,300 4, or uh, 4.3 liters. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I actually had some publications there, and it was nothing, nothing major, but. Uh, I, I couldn't do it more than uh, 150 years. So it would be close to what you said for you. Because it was good. Yeah, so now this is what we're going to do. Just so you guys, because the process that we had to go, to go through, 
was basically we had to educate ourselves to then start educating our chapel community to then mutually take them because we couldn't take them to donate blood without them understanding what was going on. So this process that we're going to do with you guys right now is what we had to do to ourselves. This, these are all the main questions that we had to research. So this is basically how do you think you know about blood and blood donations, and how do you need to know so you can actually help help this cause. So we're gonna guys, distribute papers, and there's gonna be a few questions.
Correct yourselves. Everybody's gonna get a prize, so thanks for participating. And everybody's gonna win. I just knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna give one one more candy for those who win. But please be honest. Don't you just make everything right? So basically, uh, uh, please pay attention, guys. Uh, according to the World Health Organization, uh, five percent of a country uh, is recommended to to donate blood. But only two per, but Brazil only does two percent. So in actual numbers, Brazil has uh, two hundred million people. Uh, only four million people donate, but we need ten million people to donate. So that's in, in big numbers. We can see, imagine how much blood is not donated and is needed. And one donation can save up to three lives. Sometimes even four, because sometimes they use it in babies. So that's a small quantity. And here's just a fun fact. It wasn't a question. But like I said, 46% shortage, like I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, and that's a lot of blood not going to the banks. Yeah. And a 70 kilogram person has an average 5.5 liters. Just a quick poll, who got close to this? Five. Because when I had to learn this, I, I got way off. We got like 4.5. is actually 30, but we're going to explain a little bit of each step of the process. So basically when you get there to donate, it's actually really simple. You just sign up in the table that you have to give all your documents so they can register who you are and why you're there. Then you puncture your finger. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but they just collect one little drop of your blood to test for anemia and other simple things that you can identify by just one drop of blood. Then they do the blood pressure test, which is they usually strap something around and they do that little pump. And so it's very simple as well, that takes like two minutes. And then the questions part. That's the tough part that almost no no one gets by. Because they ask you so many specific questions like surgeries that you've done in recent like weeks, um, places you've traveled to. And so a lot of people get held back to like not really donate. awkward questions like, uh, have you ever had sexual intercourse with a uh, former prisoner? Yeah. <laughs> or so, if you... Like Sorry. Yeah, so these, they ask, just so you can see how specific the questions get, um, so a lot of, we took actually 20 people, and only half of those people could donate, just because they got stuck up in the questions, and then you stay seated on the chair, giving blood to maximum 10 minutes, usually it takes a little bit less, it depends on the blood flow and how you cooperate, and if you don't have complications, and then you get a free snack after that. And the, these are some of the uses. I don't know if you guys got them right. The plasma is, you didn't have to put um, specifically with each one, but they basically use for trauma, burns, um, blood clotting, because some people um, have some her heritage diseases that don't let your blood clot. Also for cancer treatment, anemia as well, um, mainly all types of surgeries. And the reason why it's important for a lot of people to donate blood, like in the statistics said, 5% of a country, is because blood expires. So it can only stay within certain days in the blood bank or else they have to throw it away. So that's one of the main reasons why it's important. This is, this is actually the foundation that we donated with, Fundação Pro Sangue. It's the biggest one in Sao Paulo. And they're really structured, they're very good. And they even do advertisements like these, they have push advertisements like these. So, to the viewers aren't the only ones that can save lives, give blood. And they have a series of these that we also used to market in our school. Now, how we made it happen, like we said, and like you guys just did, we educated ourselves on what um, giving blood means, actually, and what, in what involves in it. We also needed support from the school. Like we were explaining, there were a lot of ego issues that if we were on our own, we couldn't resolve it. We need um, the school support to do that. We also had to research a lot, and by research we mean we had to find the, from the Fundacion, the organization that did this with us, that were, was willing to work with teenage students to donate blood. Then we had to create a timeline. The school wouldn't let us 
go on with the project if you didn't create a very specific um, time with, with all the events and like everything that we were planning on doing specifically. And then we established our goals, which are basically two. Raise awareness, which is also to educate people. And this is important because, like I said, only people that are older than 16 can donate. However, we also wanted to involve the whole high school. So even the younger kids, because high school at chapel starts from seventh grade, that's kind of like middle school and other schools, but the whole high school, which is from seven to 12, we wanted to include them also in this project. So because uh, we want this project to be an ongoing thing. So we want to do it every year. And people who are not 16 will be 16. And when they are, we want them to donate. Exactly, and if they are aware of all these issues and how important it is, they can go home and ask their parents to go donate when in their free time, you know? So it was very important to not only physically get people to go donate blood, because like we showed, there's a shortage, but also to raise awareness. And we also want to get 30 people to donate. We got 10 in this first trial that we did, and we plan on going back there on November 26th to donate more, and hopefully this time we'll get more people to donate. These are the, uh, the form that we, we printed out that we give to students. And here are the basic requirements. So you gotta be older than 16 and younger than 69. And uh, you gotta print forms of the officially allow you uh, to donate blood by your parents. And there's forms for to, to leave the school. And you gotta have an original ID and a copy of an ID. And you gotta have your uh, parents or legal guardians ID. And you gotta weigh at least uh, 50 kilograms and have slept six hours in the past 24. And you could could not uh, could not eat any fat in the last four hours. So this was something that we also had to talk to the school to not serve uh, uh, fatful foods because yeah. we're living like right after lunch. And this was our official invitation. We printed out and we gave them and sent an email this to the students and teachers and parents. And it was very important because, like we said, there will be questions in the day that we go. Like when you get there, they ask you questions. But it's important for people to know these basic requirements so they don't go, so they don't waste their whole trip. You know, if they know that they can't go because they were sick, they'll wait another week and then you go on their free time. You know, so we focus a lot on informing people about the requirements to be able to donate blood. And now, being a little bit more specific. When we were planning, we divided ourselves, the group of students that were organizing, which wasn't only the four of us, it was other members from NHS. We divided ourselves into logistics and marketing. And basically in logistics, it involved three steps. The first one was compile the documents, like we explained. There are so many forms that have to be filled out. The underage form, the form to be able to leave school, the form, medical forms, if something happens, what they should do with you if you're like having a headache or something. So those forms, they had to be approved by the school and then sent to the parents and then we had to, one week before, chase people around school to give in the forms and give in their documents. It was a little bit tiring. And then we had to educate the students, like we said, and Barb's is gonna explain a little bit about this in the marketing session. But one very important thing that we did was we presented, um, kind of like we're doing now, but to the seven to 12th graders in advisory an advisory is basically, I don't know if you guys have this in your school, but you do? Yeah. Does everybody know what advisory is? It's basically um, each grade, every week, once a week, they join together with some teachers which they're supposed to build trust and confidence with. And they talk about a variety of um, things and they let us talk about the blood drive in one of the meetings. So um, all the members that are that we're organizing this project, we spread ourselves out into the different classes and we presented for 20 minutes about what it was to kind of engage them and raise awareness and also to hopefully get them to go donate. And we also sent many emails and Facebook messages to get people informed. And lastly, we visited the hospital that we went to, which is Hospital das Clinicas, which is one of the biggest hospitals in Sao Paulo. Here's just an overview of it. This is like the whole hospital, so it's very, very big. And they have um, a big section just for this organization, Fundação Pro Sangue, and just for people to go to. Okay, so for our blood drive, we used various methods of advertisement aimed not only to those who were 
eligible to donate blood but, to also, uh, but also to those who couldn't donate blood because well not only do we want people to participate in our blood drive but we also wanted as Karina said to uh, promote an awareness for the cause of the blood drive or to educate uh, as many students as we could or as many people as we could about the importance of donating blood and also on the issue of Sao, Paulo, Sao Paulo's blood shortage. So first we created a seizure or specifically a parody because we decided to uh, capture the attention of students by entertaining them, so to make them interested in our blood drive. And then we moved on to more emotional videos in order to explain the importance of, uh, importance of the blood drive and to also make students aware about Sao Paulo's blood shortage. Uh, later we moved on to ecological posters. Um, they were ecological because we will uh, classify each poster so that when we, are, when we write the dates, we are not writing on the posters, but on the plastics themselves. So then we could just remove the posters and preserve them for future uses for future blood drives. Uh, later, we decided to create a red day, which would be on Wednesday. And in this red day, uh, students would come dressed in red, uh, not only those who could but donate blood, but also those who couldn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was done in order to uh, promote uh, an awareness for our project. And uh, in order to encourage people to more people to come in red, we decided to hold a competition. And this competition would be held among the advisories in our school. And what we did was we counted how many people in each advisory were dressed, were dressed in red. And uh, then we gave uh, chocolates as a reward for the advisory with the most number of students uh, dressed in red. Uh, then we decided to expand our advertisement to the internet via Facebook since it, since it is a very popular social network that people, well many of you guys look at every day. Uh, and what we did was we created digital posters and we decided to post them occasionally at the Facebook groups of Beach Gray. And in our school we have a Facebook group with all the high school students and they do presentation in the, the big auditorium. The video about the blood drive, the second one, was the, also the one that we used to, to do the propaganda, which is a, like an, an after donation video. Because since we have like two donation, two, two days to donate, and in the first one we did the, with, the, with the posters, and after the first one to make, uh, to kind of call people for the next one, uh, we used the video. And recently we had a parent-teacher conference, and we decided to use this as an opportunity for marketing. Uh, what we did was during the conference we set up a table for the blood drive itself and then we just were, we kept distributing uh, the invitations for parents, teachers, and students in order to invite them or to make them more aware of the blood drive and we invited them to, we invited them to go to the second uh, blood drive. So this is one of our posters. Um, as, um, when we were making posters, we tried to focus on different aspects of the blood drive. One of them was uh, the serious aspect, was, which was about the importance of donating blood and how it can help save, uh, help solve Sao Paulo's blood shortage problem. And the other aspect was uh, a more positive and optimistic aspect in which we tried uh, to show the importance of helping others and showing care. Uh, this is the poster that shows this aspect. And also, in many of the posters that we created, we try uh, to always, to many times, include our logo and our slogan, uh, which is also present in the video. Our uh, logo is this cute little drop, and the slogan is Give Love, Give Life, Give Blood. And this was done in order to keep the blood drive in the minds of many people. All right, now we're gonna show you guys the, this is for the red day. We're gonna show you guys the teaser that we did that she mentioned, which is a parody.
Basically, uh, we just got the video and edited it out, and she and another NHS member, they dubbed it, and they did sad <laughs> propaganda for her. Uh, okay, so basically, outcomes of October 15th were, um, we had 16 volunteers, 3 teachers, and uh, 13 students. We had 9 people who donated, 10 blood bags, which is uh, 4, point, uh, 4, 4 liters about as you guys saw mentioned. Complications, we had a lot of traffic. We took about one hour and a half to get there and we actually got there late, about 30 minutes. Um, we had problems with documents. Um, if your document is too old, uh, they won't allow you to go to only blood without your parents. And uh, some pro signatures were mixed between mom and dad, so they couldn't allow it. And um, we had some pre-donation questions, as I mentioned. And um, for example, if you had a cold, one week before you couldn't donate your blood or um, if you had any uh, any uh, surgery or um, being to any high risk places, you couldn't donate blood. And that's why your number um, of uh, people who donated was actually nine instead of 16. So, um, okay. so in our short term future planning, uh, we will do more marketing uh, and posters and videos for our next um, donation, which will be on November 26th. We'll do a Tuesday talk uh, for parents, so basically we're gonna bring uh, someone uh, in, uh, and that person comes from Prose, Prose and uh, they're gonna actually teach the parents uh, what you have to do and um, why you should donate blood. And uh, obviously more parents and teachers uh, should go as well as students. Um, this time we only had three teachers, next time we wanna call more parents and uh, even more teachers. Our long-term future, obviously, the, one of the NHS pillars is service. So we want to maintain this as a tradition, make this a semester projection uh, for our group NHS. We want to have more uh, engagement of the PTA. PTA is um, a parent-teacher association. It's this um, associate association in school that involves um, moms, and, uh, moms and dads and the school itself. So they can um, open up the marketing to even more, um, even more parents. And uh, students will get involved in a life long term. So obviously, if they donate once, they can actually get their um, they can actually get their um, permission, and uh, they'll be able to go back again, even without the school, um, for that matter. All right, just really quick, do you guys have any questions about a project or anything? Okay. Hey, just um, the questions that they ask when, when you go donate are they always the same questions or they change? I Depends believe there's questions the same. Yeah, in Brazil, they're supposed to be the same, and they're ver verified from uh, male to female. But uh, where are you from? Uh, I live in Peru, but I'm from Brazil. Ah, got it. Mm. So I, I don't know how it works in Peru if you're doing your school, but I believe the best thing to do is actually to call the blood donation yeah. center and, and see if they can. But like the essential really questions are basically the same because everybody has to take care of on the same issues, but just like specific regions, like. They ask you specific regions in Brazil that you've been to because there are some high risk places. So that's the minor things that vary. There's also a age restriction. I know in Bolivia, for example, you're restricted to 21 years old. That's a minimum age for you for you to donate. In Brazil, fortunately, it's 16. So um, there are lots of um, variables between each country. Anyone else? Show the video. Yeah. So we got another video here. It's uh, just. Really quick interviews with uh, the people who are here. Oh, and just really quick, don't leave the room without getting your prize for participating. So just don't leave. <laughs> Thank you. 
Questions? How are we on time? Um, yep, yeah. yeah. But does anyone know where to go for the breakout session?